Estate planning. What is it? Who needs it? And why? Let's first agree on some vocabulary. What is an estate? Your estate is simply everything you own. Your investments, insurance policies, bank accounts, cars, collectibles, personal belongings, your home and other real estate, your retirement accounts and your other nest eggs. When you start adding it up, you may discover that you own much more than you thought. Next, what is probate? Probate is simply the act of distributing your estate. It'll first have to be assessed, and then it is paid out to your heirs. Oh, oh no, wait. First, taxes will have to be paid. They're always taxes, like income taxes, death taxes, the appraiser fees, CPA fees, they all need to be taken care of. But now, oh, oh, oh yeah, they'll have to be the probate costs. Those are the attorney fees, the court costs, the executive fees, and so on. And at this point, what's left will in fact be distributed to your heirs. All these aspects of the probate process will be determined by the court system, may take up to two years. The information is available to the public and it was estimated that in the United States, the attorney fees alone related to probate are annually about $1.5 billion. So what is estate planning then? It allows you to keep control over your assets even after your passing or if you incapacitate it. Here are a few examples of common estate plans, such as the will, the joint ownership, doing nothing, gifting your assets, beneficiary transfer or revocable living trust. Let's look at them in detail. Doing nothing. After your passing, your local court system will take over and the normal probate process may commence. In case of your incapacity, your court system will take over, you may get a legal guardian and you will lose control over your assets. A will is designed to take care of your affairs after your passing. However, it will not cover joint ownerships, certain retirement accounts, or potential incapacity. It is subject to interpretation by the court and will potentially appoint a legal guardian to some of your heirs. Joint ownership. After your passing, assets held in joint ownership will automatically go to the joint owner. If you have children of a previous marriage or if your spouse remarries, your assets may never reach the people you had in mind. It will not cover incapacity, may have unintended consequences, and in short, you don't have control. Giving away your assets. Well, first of all, you give up control of your assets and they may not be available to you when you most need them. In addition, you may create unintended tax consequences and you're not covered for incapacity. Transferring assets through beneficiary designation can transfer certain assets upon your passing to your beneficiaries without having to go through probate. If your beneficiaries are minors, the court may appoint a legal guardian to protect the assets. If the beneficiary passes or is incapacitated, the court will have to decide how to proceed from there. Revocable Living Trust You can transfer all of your assets to your trust and as the trustee you will still have absolute control over your assets. Yet technically you don't own anything anymore and as your trust cannot die, you will remain in control of all of your assets even after your passing or in case of your incapacity. For medical decisions a living will lets your physician know the kind of life support treatment you would want in case of a terminal illness or injury. An advanced director for healthcare lets you give the legal authority to another person in advance to make healthcare decisions on your behalf. And a HIPAA authorization is needed so that the doctor may discuss your medical situation with your family members, close friends, business partners or advisors. If this video has encouraged you to address your legacy, we recommend a five-step action plan. One, 
Write down your objectives. Whom you want to receive your assets and when. Whom you want to manage your financial affairs and make your medical decisions for you when you can't. Two, inventory assets and debts. Find out how much you own. Three, select a professional to help. Someone with whom you will be comfortable sharing this information with, who can answer your questions and who will be there for you when you need him or her. Four, have the legal documents prepared. And five, change the titles to your living trust if applicable, as if a living trust can only control the assets that you put into it.